It says we're live, Dr. Kimberly. Oh my goodness. And good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, April 6th. And as you can see, Dave is on another assignment and Brian Edwards all the way is in his stead today. And as you can see, she's um, taking his place quite well. Oh, it says that we're live. Thank you, Pastor Dave, stand in, Brian. Of course, Dr. Kimberly. So we are so excited on today. We are, oh, hold on, y'all. We finna go to Memphis right now. I'm just so excited. I love her accent. <laughs> <laughs> on our way to Memphis. How many of you know that Rosie, oh my God. <laughs> Rosie on the Road has been in almost 20 states. We've been in more than 60 cities since we began last, oh my goodness, May. We are almost coming up on our one year anniversary. We are so excited and so grateful. Wow. Have we got a show for you today? We have a newbie. Yes, we do. We have Miss Aisha Gilliam, who is, as I said, she's down there in Memphis. And she new guy in the wheelchair. Yes, she is. So we're getting ready to hear a little bit about her story. And ooh, she's an exciting, exciting person. And we're gonna share some tips with her. So please, you know, you guys from all over the United States, especially my friends over there on the East Coast. I want you to chip in and um, give her some great advice, especially those who have uh, been in a wheelchair all their life, those who may start using one at three or four years old, and even those who are new, well, I should say acquired their disability later on in life and are required now to use a wheelchair. So I think that we're gonna have a great conversation on today. Hey, beautiful. Hey. hey. How you? Okay. I said, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm, I'm blessed. That's all that I can say. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored in the way. Hallelujah. You know, I just, I just feel, I just feel down in my sanctified soul that she might be able to sing. God. Oh sing. my God. I just feel like she could just sing, you know? How many of y'all, y'all raise your hands, come on y'all, raise your hands if you just feel like she could sing. Just a little bit, I promise you, I am not I just, a real true singer, <laughs> but just a little bit. But I bet you know a hymn, don't you? I do know a hymn. I know a whole lot of hymns, which, but I'm not gonna sing it today. But which one is your favorite? Oh, uh, bless me now, oh gentle savior. Ooh, see, oh gentle savior. Listen now, <laughs> I'm not singing, so give it up. <laughs> give it up. <laughs> Did you see that, Brian? I was trying to prime the pump. You see what I'm saying? Right? Yep, you were. Yep, I not more was... today. <laughs> I believe that's past me, not old gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. Wow. Well, maybe I'm calling. I... Yeah. I'm calling. Mm. Do not pass me Do not by. Pass me by. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, know, you know, we make up names. <laughs> We, we do that. Why is that your favorite hymn? Uh, I never want the Lord to pass me by no matter what I'm going through in any circumstance, any situation. Do not pass me by. Please, not me. Somebody else maybe, but not me. So that's been my prayer for a long time. I don't care what I'm going through. Just Jesus. When it's my time, do not pass me by. Simple. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a great way to uh, start the discussion is that still your song? That is still my song, still to this day, no matter what. Gentle Savior, please don't pass me by. Stop, because you're trying to get me worked up. I'm just saying, you know, we, we all have our, uh, in our deep, deepest, darkest moments when life can hit us in the gut 
and it does, it can, it will. My grandmama used to say, just keep on living, baby. Just keep on living. Your turn gonna come. And um, my turn came like eight years ago. And um, your turn came just six weeks ago. And I'm gonna tell my truth. Six weeks in, I know I could not have been interviewed. So tell me at six weeks in, how you have the strength and the courage to come on here today. Well, I believe uh, six weeks, it almost still feel like yesterday that it happened, but uh, I believe the strength of God is why I'm able to talk about it. And because I know that um, God is a healer, I've been through this process for a very long time with testifying about the healing power of God. So I think this is just normal. I think this is just another situation with a different outcome that I'm able to testify about while I'm in the process, because this is just an ongoing testimony um, that I believe that that from six weeks to now, that it will be a full testimony soon. Uh, but I believe just my, by be growing up in the church, knowing what testimony and testifying does to the body of Christ, it encourages somebody. So in this process, I'm willing to encourage any and everybody, you know, because like you said, six weeks, who would be talking about this? No, I'm going to talk about it because I know who God was to me then and I know who he is to me now. So please tell us exactly what happened to you six weeks ago. Well, let's see. February <laughs> the 27th, um, probably like going over into this Sunday morning, me and my friend was just sitting on the couch, just a normal evening. After church, I done shouted, I done ran, I done cried, I done did a whole lot. Uh, and after church, I literally, we went home, chilling on the couch, watching a movie, and I just felt this overwhelming feeling come over me. And it was it was almost like up and down, hot, cold. Uh, I got super dizzy, my legs got weak. Now, normally, in a time where my legs were going, normally get numb due to past um, sicknesses that I've dealt with, I just go pop vitamins and everything be fine. But this time my legs were completely numb and a tingling feeling. And when I was trying to get up, I was not able to stand. So I just, I was like, okay, I told my friend, I just don't feel good. I don't feel good. So make a long story short, I literally fainted two times. My left side literally just felt like it, it had a shock pain and it shut down. My right side was just normal. I don't, I don't really know how to explain the feeling, but I know it was kind of normal. And I literally fainted. And she shook me. I was like, Isha, come on, come on, come back. And I was like, okay, yeah. They, so she called my god mom. And she was like, hey, yeah, this, this is going to be, this, this is not good. So I wanted, she wanted to take me to the hospital. I'm like, no, spirit of pride. I'll talk about that later. I'm like, no. I'm not going to the hospital. I'm going to pray. I'm going to sit myself right here and I'm going to get better. Yeah, I did not get better. So I told her, I said, give me a moment. Just give me a moment. And she was sitting right here on the side of me. And I literally just laid my head down. And I think in her mind, she just like, she needs this moment. So she's not, she wasn't going to bother me. But in that moment, I literally fainted in her arm. And I felt my spirit come from my feet all the way up my body and leave. And I literally seen, it's almost like something I'm gonna move, but it was just a me and God encounter at that moment. And I literally seen my spirit hovering over my head and I was out. And what shocked me was the fact that I seen it over my head. I'm like, okay, and my body just felt super cold. I literally just got super cold and I was shivering. And I guess the shivering is what alert my friends to just push me. She was like, come on, get up. And I just jumped up and I screamed. And she, she has, I don't think she only seen me cry like one time in life. And I literally started screaming, crying. Um, like, I gotta go, I gotta go. And I had these leg uh, warmers on. Normally it circulate my blood. And I just snatched them off. And she literally picked me up, put me in the car, and we went to the hospital. And after that, my memory literally went left until we got out the hospital two days later and she reminded me of what happened and she literally told me when I came back she seen my face turn purple and bluish 
Mm-hmm. So um, I believe that I had a encounter with God in that moment to choose um, whether I wanted to live or whether I wanted to go see him. Now me, I'm like, God, I'm ready to see you. I'm fine. Look, I am well. All is well. Look, take me. I'd rather be in heaven than on earth, this wicked earth. But in that moment, I knew then that this right here, that moment was going to be a testament of his true healing. And I want to be that. I want to be that. So that's what that that's what happened and you know overall out of these six weeks um i was told at the doctor well at the doctor they told me that i they didn't they still do not know what exactly caused it um and i don't know what caused it but i have a you know i have a sense of what i feel spiritually as to what happened but outside of that i have they told me that i would they don't know when the next time i'll be able to walk again and me being a believer, <laughs> I said, oh, I'm going to get up soon. That's not, that's not, this right here is not going to be my forever story. So um, outside of that, out of these six weeks, I have progressed. I have, um, I, I, of course, went to therapy to learn how to walk again. Certain things are now in the works of me triggering my memory. I still cannot currently feel anything from waist down. Um, but God is a healer because literally I have experienced a, a, what's the word? Um, a great awakening, literally in a matter of a month, the doctors told me, but well, and my therapist, they said, well, we don't know when you're able to really stand. Now they say walk, they don't know it all, but they said stand in three months by myself. Well, this past month, which I call March Miracles, um, March Miracles allowed me to stand on my own from 0% to 100% by myself. And that just wow. happened last week. And make this make sense. I cannot feel anything waist down, but I'm fully standing. Wow. That is called muscle memory. Listen, Absolutely. and I'm just glad to have any kind of memory, whether it's muscle memory, regular memory, left memory, flight memory. That's, I'm grateful for any kind of memory. So, yeah, yes, that's, that's that. So our, our body, when you, so did they diagnose you with a stroke? So when I, actually, I got discharged out of the hospital um, with stroke papers. Everything mm -hmm. on the papers of discharge uh, explained the sickness, explained everything for, for stroke. And I know it said something about fast. Uh, I can't, I don't really know exactly what it was, something about fast. But um, it explained all of the symptoms. When I got home, what was it like one week later or two weeks later when the doctor called me? A week and a half later, the doctor called me and said it was a instrument attack something it was the ischemic. ischemic stroke attack or something like that so i heard that that was a minor stroke then a week later um i well like two weeks later i got the results from all of the mri and yeah some of the results the mri um i had so many tests done on my brain so like is it a body what you say? I said they do an EEG where they put all the electrodes. Yeah, they, yes, they did a lot. I went through several machines and all that kind of stuff. And so I was just basing off, okay, I was going off of what she said, an uh, IAS or instrument, whatever that is, ischemic stroke. So I was just going by that until I got the results in and it said everything was a main stroke. So I was a little confused, and I'm still a little confused to this day. I have not spoken with the hospital doctor yet, but I'm going to the doctor Thursday. That's why I'm in Memphis in my hometown. But overall, everything that the test results stated was a stroke. So I think they were just trying to get me out the hospital <laughs> with something, um, honestly. But at the end, that's what it is. And so a lot of it was, it was starting to explain, like, a mass, a tension on my brain, a pinched nerve, and 
it was just mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that was on there. But of course, my left side is just the weakest. So, but I'm still able to do this. So that in itself is a miracle because they told me majority of my left side shut down, including the left side of my brain. So I don't really, you know, I'm still learning the ins and outs of explaining, you know, the actual sickness and what happened. So Dr. Kimberly, I know that you're getting ready to say something and I want to say something to her before you do. Um, I was four years old when I had my first stroke and I fell in a tub and I broke both of my hips and my pelvic bone. It affected my left side. But if you're looking at me, you, you like if you're looking at me from, you know, the neck up, well, from the waist up, you can't tell that I'm in a wheelchair. You can't tell that, I, you know, that I have the numbness or the tingling or anything like that. Like it's, it's not something that everybody can see. So for you to even experience that, that moment where it was just you and God, he wanted you to know that it didn't matter where he was getting ready to take you. If you can overcome everything else that you've overcame before this, don't allow a doctor to tell you what you can't overcome. Because they told me that I wasn't going to ever walk again. And I'm telling you, I stand up. I have um, HKFOs. It's hip, knee, and foot orthotics. I'm not sure if they got to that point where they talk to you about that type of stuff to help you hold yourself up where you are weak. But um, I mainly do walking and moving around by myself. Uh, so I don't want you, of course, keep your high spirit. And whatever they say when you go see them on Thursday, just just believe in your mind and in your heart that God has the last say. Even if you have to use the wheelchair for long distance, that's okay. He, he gave you a story that he wanted you to be able to go out in the world and tell somebody else because it may be somebody else that already been through it or somebody that's going through a lot of the same steps that you went through before you got here. And if you need someone to talk to and uplift you, I'm here. I'm here. I know exactly what you're going through. I know what you're dealing with. And we're all in this together. Which is which is so awesome. So we, we want to um, talk about some of the Brittany Sanders says, hey, we do. Um, Shana says, hello. And Brittany Sanders was like, please don't pass me. Yes. <laughs> so we're we going to get this out. Uh, Oh, my church family, though me and it's my church family on there. Rucker, so you want to say hey, pray more Rucker? Listen, I feel a Baptist fit coming on. Hallelujah! Can we get a can we get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. Oh my God. Yes. And uh, who else we got? We got Carl Ussery watching. All right, Rachel Merritt said, "Glory to God, your faith will make thee whole." Glory to God. Shana says, I love your spirit and your attitude, your love for God. Keep on. God's got you. Uh, Marisa Collins says, so grateful for your life. Keep pushing, sis. Don Trail Sim says, what a testimony. We got all kinds of hearts going up. So we are so excited to have you on today. The time is now 4.17. We're going to stop and say thank you so much to the Deaf of Heart of Hearing for rolling with us for almost one year. Can you believe it? We are almost at the one year mark. We started six weeks into the pandemic and look where we are now. How grateful we are. We have been in more than what, 20 states, more than 60 cities. And um, we reached more than 49,000 people over this last, you know, what, 10, 11 months, probably more now, because as of December 31, it was 49,000 folks that we had reached. And we are just so grateful. We want to say thank you to Disability Advocates of Kent County and to 100 Shades of Disabilities, who are our sponsors and let us do what it is that we do. Dave is on assignment today, so we are so grateful to have Miss Breon Edwards in his stead. Yay! Yay! And today we are in Memphis. We are. She, she is the brand. Yes. Amen. We are miss, with Miss Aisha Gilliam, who is six weeks into 
a stroke. What a testimony so far. I am in year eight. As you can see, I'm in my motorized chair. Beat my horn and back it on up. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Aisha is hanging out with her wheel friends on today. Pun intended. Yes, it was. She hanging out with her wheel friends. Yeah, you know. So that's that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> but I, I just love it. Um, I love the conversation, you know, the, the conversation before the show, the show before the show. And um, as Aisha and I were sharing, I told her I was going to ask this question. <laughs> A busy, 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 busy lady busy and that's another show for another day but um today it is to really just welcome her into the community and what i found very interesting was she said that she had no connection no relationship mm -hmm. with a disability and so for her this is just all new and it's new for everyone around her. We had a show a couple of weeks ago with Breon. Now, Breon has had exposure, her family's had exposure, but she is the only person that was born um, initially with a, a disability or as she likes to say, being differently able and what that looked like. And now we have someone who has no, none, and I said, are you sure? I said, not anybody. She said, no. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. Unmute yourself. I'm ready. <laughs> um, but let's talk about that a little bit. Coming into this experience with not having a, what did the Bible say? A tittle or a tittle. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> a tittle or a tittle. So not a tittle or a tittle uh, of anyone with a disability and the question that I asked of you how has that made you feel being in an environment where there is no one that looks like you can you relate to that experience yeah, it's been uh, I would say overall this experience without experience of someone uh, being around me like it's been it's been very very different I say very different um of course, going to the mall, going out to eat, you will see someone uh, with a disability and in my, just my heart period, I will automatically help. But being in this situation, it's almost like, um, it's like, wow. It's, it's a wow effect because you really don't know how that person feels until you get in their shoes. Now, you know how we just talk to like, if you was in my shoes, you would know and you would know. But no, this right here is a very, it's, it's a strange place to be in when you when you have not experienced it around now I believe if, if my grandmother or my cousin or anybody or a friend was in this situation I would probably be the biggest caregiver like I'll go get licensed I'll go do this I'll go do that but being that I have not had that experience it's been very hard but it's been made easy because I have a great large um I was going to say fan base, but no, support system. <laughs> support system. I'm so used to talking about fans, but support system that I have not missed one beat. So I just believe that now that I've been in this place and I, they have gained experience, it almost makes me, I, now I did say, I was like, uh, being that I have six businesses and, and probably two by the end of this year, I said next year, I would want, I want to open up a um therapy um clinic being that i was in this situation it's almost like a whole nother world has opened up around me and me and my friend we we was experienced like we went out to eat last night and i told her i said you want to know one thing i realized i said all of the handicapped uh parking spots that's where the ramp is <laughs> like anywhere you see the close like the closest sign is where the closest ramp is she was like oh my god i never even realized that and i said being in this spot makes you realize everything around you so if i never had anyone around me that was in a same similar situation i know now how to treat it i know now what to look around i know 
I took I, my my surround. I'm more aware of my surroundings. I'll say that. One of the things that is interesting when you talk about parking is how quickly, if you didn't have a disability, I'm gonna park here just real quick. Uh, and it don't take me but a second to go get in, and because ain't nobody gonna come that's gonna need this spot anyway. So and they probably not driving. And now you see when you pull up and it's like you want to know, um, do you really need that spot? And then when you see somebody get out and they don't have a wheelchair and they don't have a walker, but they then you're like, oh, well, do you even have a handicap sign or? Right, right. I've I've been like that. I've been critiquing everybody like this. Like I need that spot. <laughs> like move. I need it. And so I'm, I'm a, so as a person who didn't become a wheelchair user until age 47. And yes, I will be 55 years old. I tell everybody, I'm just so excited. Because I'm like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that. No makeup, y'all. See that? Look, my fingers is clean. No makeup. No makeup. Uh, I don't wear makeup either. I just got on a little lipstick. <laughs> little balls and fly lashes. But uh, that was the first thing that I would do is i'm sorry i would sit and say it, it, you don't have a wheelchair don't, don't you see that big wheelchair sign up there you know you could park one over if you can walk you know it just, it's just not that far for you but you know why should i have to wheel myself all the way down or you know there's no cutaway in the next spot and so i had to start teaching people that if you see a handicapped spot if it's two solid lines anybody can park there but if it's solid lines are on either side, they've got it blocked out. Those spots right there are reserved for wheelchair users so that they have the room to open up the door or open up the door, you know, get the ramp or, or space to get the wheelchair out or for someone to come in between the cars. And it's just like, yeah, I just love doing this. One of my favorite things to do. <laughs> like, hmm. And I have this little look and I'm just sitting like this. Mm -hmm. Where's your chair? <laughs> Where's your chair? All <laughs> the lips are pursed. Mm. Mm. Yes, you know. So I, that that's probably one of my 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 pet peeves that I think that you know just you could park one over. You don't need the cutaway. The cutaway is designed for the person. Who has the wheelchair or the walker so that they don't have to try to get over that hump of of the sidewalk uh, but you you have really been blessed your story is a rarity i i'm, I'm here to tell you it, it's a rarity mm -hmm. that you can have something like this happen and you have the support of your community your friends and get right into therapy and get the things that you need. There are so many that don't have that. And if you are in your area, regardless of where you are, contact your Center for Independent Living. They can assist you if you need wheelchairs, walkers, um, if you need a ramp put on. That, that's the other thing. Was your apartment or your home accessible to you? No, it was not actually. Um, I, I think that was my first breakdown that I had once uh, my mom popped the wheelchair out the box. I was like, whoa, like this, this is a lot. It became like super serious at that point because I'm like, okay, let's see if I can fit in my room. And thank you, Jesus, I can fit in my room. I was so excited. But then I got to the restroom. I was like, oh my God. And I had, I literally, that was my first breakdown that I had because I could not fit in my restroom. And I looked at my closet. I was like, oh my God, I'm a fashionista. So my closet is huge, but the door entryway is small. And I'm like, oh my God, I have all the, all the space to wheel in my closet, but I cannot fit. And I had a major breakdown at that point, but no, it's, it was not accessible. Um, but I contacted, well, my, um, what is it called? The person, landlord, contact. I'm a first time home, well, home buyer, home renter. Um, so I, I'm just now really getting into all of it, you know, realty talk or whatever. But uh, my landlord reached out to me and they were like, you're so young. Like, 
well, how did this happen? And we want to make sure that you're comfortable in your home and all of this. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can't fit in uh, my room. I can't fit into my closet, my restroom. I need some help. So they, they're sending somebody actually next week to create a ramp to go inside the house, inside the garage. They're giving me access in my uh, shower rail and other things like that. Um, now the person that home it is, she was just willing to tear down the whole wall <laughs> and let me go in because, uh, the, because I explained my story to them. And of course they like, all right, your rent. <laughs> what do you think about your rent? Cause you're not working. I'm like, baby, thank God for a savings account. Amen. Amen. But I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm well. So they, they're very open up to making the home all the way accessible if I need it. But at this point, um, I'm just like, I, I don't need the room, the doors broken down or open up because I don't believe. Okay. I don't believe that. What you can do is you can get a shower wheelchair, which is more narrow, and it will fit into a standard door. Most doors are like 32 to 36 inches. Uh, if you are a wheelchair user, you need at least a 42 inch door for an average. Um, I have a, a slimmer motorized chair and or for a manual wheelchair. I did see a picture of yours. So for that to go through comfortably without uh, knocking on the walls at all, it needs to be at least 42 inches. So that is something to consider. But usually when they make doorways, they are part of a, a load bearing wall. But if you want to know more about that, you can tune in on April 20th when we do our Absolutely Accessible Kent, where we will talk about uh, building zero step for those persons who, you know what, from the cradle to OA, you know, everybody, I don't know, someone's trying to come in, but we're not. They can watch it on, um, yeah, I'm sorry. It probably was my fault because I posted the Zoom link. I probably should, I probably need to leave. Yeah, they're, they're watching it. Okay. So okay. we apologize. You, you are able to watch this live. You don't have to come into the Zoom because we are uh, broadcasting live. And this also, we will be posted to Instagram television as well as to YouTube. So you can watch it other ways and watch the replay if you don't catch us live right now. But um, so one of the things that you can do is request a shower wheelchair, which is narrower and you can, you will be able to get right into your bathroom and wheel right up to, you know, toilet or to the bath and you can get into your closet or, you know, you do like I did, I will fold up my wheelchair, put it in first, because if there's more space, once you get in, just not in the doorway, you can use your, uh, the shower wheelchair and get in and then just transfer yourself over. So those are just some, um, some things to consider that they do have some narrow wheelchairs to be able to use to get into those spaces. But um, wow, usually people do not have that great a response from a landlord or uh, an apartment complex. And um, again, God has truly blessed you in this situation. And I am just so grateful for that for you because many, especially when they acquire a disability, don't have all the resources that they need for themselves and you know people who are readily available and then that's how you end up with persons like myself who become you know these uh, professional system advocates to help people you know if you have an issue with housing or with transportation or at your church even uh, to make sure those things are are accessible how exciting though for you um we are now at the 433 hour. Can you believe it? Time flies when you are having fun. Is there anything that, that you would like to share any words of wisdom with Miss Aisha? You said, is there any words of wisdom? Yes. Okay, because it, it kind of uh, cut out a little bit. Um, when you said 
that you could you could no longer fit into your closet or go into your bathroom. Uh, that definitely spoke volumes to me because I still go through that to this very day. Um, and like Dr. Kimberly said, you know, when when you uh, acquire uh, having to, you know, convert over, um, you definitely have to have that mindset of, you know, if I can't do it this way, what is another way that I can make it easier for me so that you don't experience those mental breakdowns as much? Um, yes, it is kind of difficult. I won't sit here and tell you guys a story or anything like that because I even still have my moments. But even in that moment, I always tell myself, if he brought me this far, I know that he'll take me further. And I'll just start talking to him, you know, like, what is it that I need to do within me so that if I come across this same type of situation, my reaction or my mental capacity will not be the same. Um, and he always told me, just lean on me. When you're feeling alone or you're feeling like, you know, nobody else understands, he puts you in a situation that is not for the next person to understand, but it's for you to grow. And you have to know that your story is not for you, it's for someone else. So um, as long as you can repeat those things to yourself, um, where, where I grow, I can go. All right. And, and there's, no, there's no limits to what you can do, whether you're in that wheelchair or you're standing on your two feet, because I can tell you, honey, <laughs> and I still do it to this day. I pull this wheelchair up uh, flights of stairs by myself Yes, no. and, and get right on his feet and get in that wheelchair. And people be like, did you really just, I mean, you wasn't down here at the bottom to meet me. So <laughs> what was I going to do? You know, I think that's, that's probably the, my biggest thing was figuring out how to do it if someone wasn't there because my um, apartment nor the building was accessible. And I believe I was telling you that when I first had the stroke, I lived up on the third floor and it was 21 stairs up. And when they took me, they had a special team that brought me home from the hospital. They put me in this lift and took me all the way up there and said, yep, this is where you're gonna stay. And I was like, oh no, that's, that wasn't no option for me. You just go put me here in this little box and think I'm just gonna sit here and stay up. Uh, mm -mm. And they're like, well, you have to call us when you wanna come back. And I'm just like, what? I don't wanna depend on nobody like that, but Jesus. And so I said, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I would slide all the way down. I found a, a, a comforter that had you know, the shiny side to it and put it down and I would slide down all them stairs and get down to the bottom. And my son would take the, take the wheelchair chair down to the bottom and I get there and then he helped me to transfer back into the wheelchair. And then when I would come home, my neighbor would put me on his back <laughs> and take me all the way up the stairs. I think it took them less than a week to move me to another apartment. But even when I got down to the downstairs apartment, it still had five, it was two stairs to come in and then five more to get down to the apartment. And when I got there, I felt like, oh my God, I'm in another box. I can't get out. And just because, you know, my favorite color is purple. So just because mm -hmm. she put a purple carpet in and painted the walls, you know, purple, I was like, I'm, I'm in a purple jail. No. And I was like, oh, we gotta figure something out. And so it's amazing that I said, I need you to give me that Samson strength after his hair had been cut. You know, most people don't realize that Samson was strong as a man, but then there was another anointing for his strength to do the things that God had called him to do. And so uh -huh. back in, before Jesus came, they didn't have the anointing on them the way they did at the day of Pentecost, right? Okay, they, they didn't have it like that. So the anointing only came on them when it was time for them to do what God had called them to do. And all of a sudden they had this extra sense 
they could think greater, they could speak greater, they could move things greater, they could fight whatever it is that they needed to do. And so Samson, you know, he had messed up a little bit. So he was like, I still need to do what God has called me to do. And he would ask for the anointing to fall on him for this extra strength. And so I said, God, I need you to give me that same anointing that you gave Samson in the time when you had him something to do. I said, I got something to do. I'm, I'm going to go to prayer and I need you to anoint me and figure out how to get up out of this, out of my place. And so he was like, okay. So I will wheel out and pull myself up by the banister and, and pivot myself around and sit on the seat, fold my chair up and put my chair on my back and scooch myself up, pull, pull myself the wheelchair and my, my good side will pull that dead, that dead weight that I'm carrying. And then when I would get close up to the top, I could flip it over my head and mm. put it down, open it and then pull myself up and get myself in that seat. And then the stairs were flat enough, the other two to get out the door where I could just bump myself down without falling out of my chair, you know, using that whole right side. And it was just amazing how God would give me the energy and the strength to do that. And once it was done, it was like, oh, it was gone. I couldn't get myself up off the couch. My caregivers had to get me off the couch and get me to where I need to be. But if I said, Lord, you know, I needed to get up. I'm ready to get up out of here. I'm going to go to the house of the Lord. All of a sudden that, that strength would, would come mm -hmm. upon me. So I, I just look at that. And one of the questions that, I had asked you that I said I wanted you to think about was who was who was God to you before this happened and who is he to you now because the 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 young man who was born blind the first thing when Jesus healed him and he took him to the Pharisees and Sadducees and said okay you need to tell them what I did how I healed you and the first question they asked who did sin I'm like, wait a minute, you just, you taking me into church. You not celebrating it, that the Lord just opened up my eyes. I've been blind since birth. I can see now. And you asking, who sin? What? Mm -mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I believe uh, who God was to me then and who God is to me now. I believe that God then was and still is the healer but through this process i believe he's the god that stripped me of pride now who's the god who got what god is to me now is the god of humility <laughs> so that's what it is he is the healer all these great things i do in his name lay hands on the sick they recover i prophesy cast out devils, do all this stuff. He was all of that. But in the middle of this process, I realized that he was the God that was stripping me of pride. Um, I was very prideful um, and did not know it. Now, I've been through deliverance for pride. I guess it was, you know, in that moment, I was delivered. But doing this right here, it stripped me of pride. That is the God I appreciate. Because if it was not for this, I would not have recognized who he is to me now, and that is the God of humility. Um, I have received a major impartation of humility uh, because of this situation. And I will say that God does not, he doesn't release sickness in the earth. You know, it's the enemy. The enemy does. And I believe that when you're saved, God allows you to, you know, God allows things to work for your good. Romans 8 is really. Amen. Um, so, it's just, I believe this situation has worked for me in my good. So he is the God of good right now and the God of humility, humility right now to me. He's a way maker, honey. She's so. <laughs> He's a way maker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. He is. He, he's been that and he's going to forever be that no matter what. He's going to be there. And I believe he has made way. Like I said, even with the doctors, the, uh, my uh, landlord and uh, bills still being paid. I'm not behind, won't be behind. I have not worked in a month and a half. And I still have 
a great amount of money in my bank account. And we bless God because the seeds that I sold to the God that he was, um, they're now, I'm, I'm reaping so many seeds. People from across the world have sent hundreds, hundreds of dollars just because I touched them in that season of when they was hurt, when they were down, when they were sick, when they were this or that. And now I'm reaping those things and I'm appreciative of it. So I have not missed one beat. That's how I know that he's a way maker. That's how I know that he's a deliverer because of the spirit of pride. And things have to happen for us to realize, you know, the spirits that we have in us, whether good or bad. Amen. So um, the spirit of humility, man, has really taken over me. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. Now, I'm still having a little issue with, you know, people helping me. <laughs> Because I've always been the help. I'm not going to get over here and lie. <laughs> I'm going to tell the truth. Uh, but I'm I'm progressing daily. Like you said, you had to ask well, your neighbor allowed, seeing you in that situation, and he allowed, you allowed him to help. Uh, my friends have been the help. And, and I'm grateful when you're so used to being that help. I'm the help. I'm supposed to help you. I'm supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, sit your butt down. And let somebody help you for a change. Let us do this for you. So my church, my family, my friends, they all have been a tremendous help. And I'm accepting it. At first, I'm like, no, leave me alone. I'm going to figure it out on my own because I've been, I've been that person. But who is God to you? That's why God put people into my life as such my family, friends, in church or whatever, you know, because he knew that this time was coming. Well, Amen. It's amazing. I think that was a great segue to an epilogue. So God, we want to say thank you so much for letting us come and visit you. What a beautiful day down there in Memphis. We have been in Memphis on today with, with Miss Aisha Gilliam and um, we welcome her. We don't know how long her assignment will be in the wheelchair, but while she is there, we are here, your wheel sisters are, are here to encourage you and to support you as you go through this. You will have some good days and you will have some bad days. Um, but we know that God is, is in control of all of the days, no matter what. And so we are so grateful for your testimony. We are grateful that we can still see the light of God that is shining on your light. And I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. If you're going through something on today, know that he will not pass you by. He is a God. And he is a good God. He's the God of all things. And I, I do believe that at times God will tap us on our shoulder and say, hey, I'm speaking to you. And when we don't listen, he has to arrest our attention. Just know that no matter what you go through, God uses it all for his glory. He does. God does not waste any situation. He does not waste one tear, not one tit, not one tittle. Does God waste and so he's able to use it all. And we are so grateful that you have three women here who our stories are a little bit different, but there's so much that makes us the same than what separates us. And God is in the blessing business and he continues to keep us all. So we are so grateful because it says we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony. And what a great testimony that we have sitting here amongst all of us. And we are so grateful for all of you who have tuned in. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you, you learned a little bit of something. And so next time when you say, oh, I'm just gonna run in and go get something, just know that's the minute that someone like myself, Aisha or Breon may need that spot. Yeah. And if you can walk just a little bit, save that spot for somebody who just might not be able to get up and walk. 
So we wanna say thank you so much to the Deaf or Hard of Hearing for being with us. We wanna say thank you to Disability Advocates and 100 Shades of Disability for sponsoring us. And on tomorrow, we are so excited. We are going to be in Atlanta. Yes, we are. Um, Miss Brittany. Uh, my home. <laughs> it's my home. Uh, we will be in Atlanta on tomorrow and we will be talking about the Johnson and Johnson COVID shot and just know the pandemic is not over. So please wear, wear your mask. Get, get, get your mask. Mask on up. Even if you've been vaccinated, you are still able to carry it and pass it on to someone else. Make sure you know how I am about my alcohol spray. Get them droplets. Oh my God. <laughs> Please just mail me over a packet so I can get my purple spray bottle. Make sure you sanitize your hands. So distance people, we, we want to get out. I want to go down to Memphis, go hang out with her, but I can't do that if y'all got cooties. <laughs> okay. All right then. We so definitely have to set something up so all of us can meet face to face. Absolutely. So come on now so we can get on through this and um, we can travel. I have my key. Y'all can travel anytime, anytime. Now, now I normally be in Memphis doing business, but like I said, I'm here for a doctor's appointment, but y'all can come anytime to Atlanta. Hey. Y'all come I, anytime to Atlanta. So I'm, I am so excited, but please be responsible and uh, we'll see you on tomorrow. We'll, Brittany will be our guest and we will be in Atlanta. Until then, you guys mask up.